Well, new research has revealed what the Earth's continents will look like in 250 million years. Europe, Asia and Africa will merge with the Americas and form a supercontinent, but up to 92% of Earth will then be uninhabitable to mammals. Joining us live is Dieter Muller, Professor of Geophysics at the University of Sydney. Professor, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. I'm keen to show our viewers the animation of what this might look like. Explain for us how this would all happen when we, we look at these images. What are we going to be looking at here? Yeah, we know from the geological past that uh, continents aggregate into supercontinents every now and then. And so ocean basins, when they become quite wide and old, um, they can uh, contract again, where subduction then consumes uh, the ocean crust and ultimately the continents collide. And supercontinents are known to aggregate at low latitudes centered on the equator. So that's once you have a supercontinent, that tends to have quite a continental and hot climate. And that's not good news for humans, isn't it? By the time we get to this point, and as you say, it is a long way off. Uh, this new supercontinent, though, it'd be just way too hot for us to live on. Yeah, well, the humans uh, tend to have uh, quite a you know self-centered view of the world. You know, we, we, we think about the world uh, uh, based on our own experience uh, on human lifetimes, and perhaps we think about you know our children or maybe our grandchildren. But beyond that, we don't worry too much about the past or the future. But uh, geologists and geophysicists, uh, they do use the um, evolution of the Earth and its geological record to try to understand how the Earth has evolved in the past over much longer time periods and how it might evolve in the future. Right? And, uh, and the question then arises, if we <clears throat> do get such a huge supercontinent in the future, and what were to happen if, uh, if humans were to go extinct? <clears throat> And uh, uh, so the interesting question is, uh, which species uh, might uh, take our place as the, uh, as the most dominant uh, 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 land species, right? And um, uh, people have worked on this. And one suggestion that's come up is uh, that perhaps birds might fill that gap on the continents um, because they're pretty smart. They're actually the only uh, uh, surviving dinosaurs, right? And uh, the idea has come up and um, that, yeah, birds might replace uh, humans on the continents. Um, they, uh, most of you have seen how ibises and cockatoos can open garbage bins, and uh, so they're pretty smart. Some birds can even use wire to make tools. Um, and, but then again, some birds are not so good at uh, surviving very hot temperatures. And another suggestion has come up. Social insects, like ants and termites, are known to be much tougher than humans. They're extremely adaptable. They've been around for 480 million years, and they, they have evolved every niche imaginable, and we know that they can survive in very hot temperatures. So imagine being replaced by ants and termites. Yeah, it's a little bit humbling, isn't it, when you put it that way, Dima? Um, how would the landscape change? Would we still have the diversity we see on Earth today with you know, hot, hot deserts, freezing ice masses, jungles and rainforests? in between, or, or would it look a lot different on, on the land? Yeah, so uh, such a huge supercontinent would look quite different. And so there would be um, a huge desert uh, in, in, in the middle. It would be an, an immense, expansive desert, much larger uh, than anything we are uh, used to at the moment. Of course, we, we know what deserts look like from the interior of Australia. But just imagine having all continents congregated in one huge supercontinent and having a huge desert in the middle, just like a giant Australia, if you like, where only uh, coastal strips are um, livable, uh, perhaps. Or it, it, and even those might not be livable for mammals. So. It's also interesting to mm, think it's about It's fascinating that. to think of. Yeah? yeah? It is so fascinating, even though we're talking about it at times so far off, and as you point out, uh, any of our descendants um, might not be around by that point anyway when we're talking 250 million years. But right now, present time, how much are those plates actually shifting? Because this is obviously a very slow process to get to that point, but they obviously shift a little bit each year. Uh, they, they do. And Australia is one of the faster moving plates. Uh, and in fact, uh, cruising uh, towards the you know, north, northeast at about uh, eight centimetres a year. So plates are said to, grow, uh, to move uh, roughly at the speed at which fingernails grow. So 
you know, not very fast over human uh, lifespans. Um, but since we are talking millions and millions of years, and they can um, cover large distances. Deet Mamula, fascinating to speak with you. Really appreciate that little glimpse into the, uh, the far off future. Really interesting to think about. Lots of food for thought there. Thanks so much for your time. You're welcome.